Hey, hey everybody, Jason here. I'm glad you're back watching another one of my videos. I'm gonna be making a bunch more videos for this channel, I promise, a bunch of nerdy stuff, some RC boats, 3D printers, some CNC machining, maybe we'll talk about some news and events, I really don't know. I created this channel just because I like making videos and I like interacting with you guys out here on YouTube. So anyways, today I thought we'd talk a little bit about my new Prusa i3 Mark IIs printers. I actually bought two of them. If you guys actually haven't looked at some of the earlier videos on my channel, there's not a ton of videos on this channel, but you, if you have looked, you'll see that I've done some 3D printer reviews, reviews on stuff like PrinterBot, TrongC, my Prusa i3 Mark II. After I bought my first Prusa i3 Mark II, I was really impressed. I use it, I used it originally just for goofing off and making models at home, but I actually have a small business where we do manufacturing and prototyping is actually a big part of my business. So we ended up deciding to buy two more Prusa i3 Mark IIs. And in the time since I've bought my original i3 Mark II, now they have the i3 Mark IIs. And it's not hugely different. The hot ends are touch different. The smooth rods are now polished. It's kind of like a more refined version. It's got U-bolts that actually hold the linear bearings onto the, the Y carriage as opposed to zip ties. But in general, I'm really happy with it. The instructions are better now than they've ever been. I will tell you a quick tip. If you're gonna build the printer, there's a measurement that actually holds the actual frame itself off the back edge of the printer and it's 100 millimeters. Maybe try 101. I started at 100, I moved it to 100.5 and then by the time I got to 101, everything worked properly. Every now and then when you're trying to calibrate or run XYZ calibration, the printer itself won't be able to reach the very front left calibration point if that if that measurement is just a little bit under 101. So it says 100. Some of my printers I've built with 100 and they've been perfect. Other ones I had to bump it up to about 101. So just a quick build tip. Overall, I'm really happy with the printer. It prints polycarbonate really well. It prints ABS, PLA. The new bearing holders, the U-bolt system that actually holds the bearings to the bed itself seem to really work really, really well. No complaints. You need to be super careful though because if you over tighten those, you can easily put clamp pressure, like too much pressure on the bearings and you can actually feel when you slide the action on the, way, on the Y axis that it's creating quite a bit more friction than, it, than say using a zip tie. Once I got the printer assembled, I did a couple of test prints. I did the XYZ calibration. I ended up having to do the XYZ calibration a couple of different times like I mentioned because I had to move that measurement of the frame to about 101 millimeters to get everything to calibrate properly, which is no big deal, a little bit of trial and error. And then I put my first test print, which was just a Batman logo printed perfectly in PLA. And so I moved directly on to, to polycarbonate and it worked flawlessly. A couple tips, if you are gonna print with polycarbonate, which is one of the harder materials to print with, no part fan whatsoever, and let the bed get to, up, to about as hot as it's gonna get. So we're printing it out of uh, Polymaker PC Plus polycarbonate filament, so. I usually set the bed to about 100, 105, and it takes some time to get there. I know the bed can get a little hotter than that, but usually about 105, 110 will get it done, and about 280 on the hot end. You can print a little bit hotter for a little bit better layer adhesion, or if you wanna run a little bit faster, I usually print right around 40 millimeters a second at about 280 degrees C. But overall, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown. It's not really, this is, this video really wasn't meant to be a completely detailed review of the new i3 Mark II S. It's really just incrementally better than the i3 Mark II platform. If I end up with the multi-material upgrade, which I was a, I actually was one of the earliest pre-order buyers of that back in September of 2016. And then I just got frustrated because it really, I mean, it's just now shipping now, what, like 10 months later, and I got pretty frustrated about that. I, a lot of this like paid pre-order stuff for equipment that's not ready, or these Kickstarter campaigns that, that never get delivered on, they're really hurting a lot of different communities, including the 3D printing community. So who knows, maybe one of these days I'll crack down, invest the money in the multi-material upgrade, and we'll start working on some cool new stuff. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. I just want to say thanks again for watching my videos. I really appreciate you guys watching. You'd be doing me a huge favor if you could either like, comment, or even better, subscribe and you'll be notified when new stuff comes out. I'm all over social media, so if you want to see stuff that just never makes it to YouTube, add me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, or come say hi on Twitter. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.